Greetings baseball fans and welcome into another episode of the British Baseball Podcast. I'm Matt Mudson and I'll be your host for this evening. Today's special guest has spent the last four years playing for Emory U and this fall he'll be going to Duke University to play baseball as a grad student. He's a champion in the legendary Cape Cod League and has played for GB for six years. And if you haven't guessed who he is now from his naming lights in the show title, he's Mr. Richard Brereton. Richard, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me on, Matthew. No problem. Pleasure's all mine. Now, just before we start, a little bit more news to report on. Cambridge have announced the launch of their women's team, the Cambridge Valkyries, and they're going to be managed by Nicole Rainier. And if you want to reach out to the team and find out how you can get involved, just have a little look for them on Twitter and drop them a line. As usual, if you're listening to the show on iTunes, why not leave the show a little review and rating and even do that right now while you're listening. You can do some multitasking. No need to pause. Just go out there and say this show's really good. It all helps. And if you're watching the show on uh, YouTube, hello. So feel free to subscribe and let us know your thoughts and suggestions there, in there too. We're now at 50 subscribers and I just found it out that it's 100 subscriptions. We need to be able to change the channel name to something proper, not 50. I don't know when that changed, but it has changed. So if you could subscribe there too and tell your friend, please do the same there too. Now, enough of my waffling. Get yourself a cup of tea. Get your curly wheel as you know the drill. Let's get on with the show. So, Richard, do you want to give us a bit of insight about yourself, how you got interested in baseball, and uh, how you got to where you are today? Sure, I'd love to. So, I've been playing baseball since I was four years old. Um, I was born in London, but moved over to the United States, to Connecticut, when I was four. Um, and my family and I have lived there ever since. So, my family is a baseball family. Both my parents grew up baseball fans. My dad played, my grandfathers played. And so it was very natural for me to pick it up from a young age. So when I was about four years old, started T-ball, worked my way through the Little League, um, played Babe Ruth, played travel baseball, played high school baseball, and was very fortunate to play college baseball the past four years at Emory University. And next year I'm going to do one more year at Duke University and play on the baseball team as well. And uh, one of my greatest joys in, the base, in my baseball career so far has been being a part of the Great Britain national baseball team, which I've been so fortunate to have done uh, for the past six years, which is amazing uh, that it's been so long. So I've been very fortunate um, to be a part of the Great Britain program. Awesome. Anybody there you want to give a shout out to? Any teammates, any coaches? <laughs> I wish I could shout out everybody, but uh, a couple that come to mind at the, uh, on, the, on the top of my mind are uh, Will Lintern and Liam Carroll. Um, they have been so instrumental in my um, Great Britain baseball career, and I can't thank them enough for the opportunities they've given me. Yeah, and likewise, they've, they've presented me some great opportunities in the form of guests as well. Two top blokes there. Uh, I'm sure the people that listen will agree as well. So have, have you ever had any difficulties or anything that you've had to overcome to play baseball? Absolutely. Baseball is a game of failure. I've failed uh, a number of times, way more than I've succeeded. But uh, those failures definitely motiv have motivated me to be uh, a better player, to, to work harder. Um, one thing that comes to mind especially is uh, I didn't play on the varsity baseball team or start on the varsity baseball team until my senior year. Um, I was on the freshman team as a freshman. I was on the junior varsity team as a sophomore. The junior, my junior season, I did make the varsity team, uh, but suffered an injury early and didn't really get back in the lineup when I was healthy to return. So um, junior year in high school is pretty significant in terms of college recruitment. Um, that summer is when a lot of colleges start to look at you uh, if they haven't already started during the high school season. So um, me not playing wasn't very helpful for um, my college expo exposure. So, um, you know, it was extremely difficult to sit on the bench that year. Um, and I came back my senior year and we won the league championship. Um, and I was named captain. Uh, we won the league championship, which was something my school had not done in 35 years. So it was, it was very significant. Um, I won 
actually won the uh, league MVP as well. So, um, you know, the culmination of hard work between my junior and senior years really set me up for success then. So um, that's, that's one, that's one thing that comes to mind. Um, I'm constantly failing. It's a, it's a really difficult game. Um, and I'm learning all the time. Lovely. So which, which coaches or, or people have had the most impact on you as a person and player? Well, the complex answer is that um, it's very complex. Uh, I've, I've been extremely fortunate to have played for and alongside so many great coaches and role models, um, people that have had an impact on my baseball career, absolutely, but more importantly, have had an impact on my life as um, my personal life and my life as a whole. Um, I guess the simple answer to that question is my dad. Uh, my dad's been he was my first coach. Uh, he's my favorite coach. He's given his right arm to my baseball career. Um, he's the one that, uh, you know, when we moved from London to the States, wanted a big backyard so that we can play catch. Um, he's the one that's built me batting cages in the backyard. Um, so absolutely, my dad. Oh, fantastic answer. And uh, we, we've got a sort of moderately sized back garden. My son just turned three. And he's been hitting a few dingers into the neighbor's garden. We've uh, we kind of lost one <laughs> one squeaky ball to next door neighbor's dog, who makes a, a quite a nifty shortstop. But yeah, he's um, he's enjoying it. So oh, I, I, was, I was going to say, you, you you moved on to to Duke University. What were you going to be studying at, at Duke as well? And uh, what was it that made you pick that particular subject? Sure. So I'm going to. I just finished. Um, at Emory University, uh, completed my undergraduate degree in business. I focused, uh, my major was in finance, and I'm going to be studying um, more business at Duke. Uh, the program is called Masters of Management Studies, Foundations in Business, and it's a one-year graduate program, so kind of an extension of what I had studied for four years uh, at Emory University been any players or any people that have managed to push you or, or make you better at your sport have you got any rivals or any teammates out there that have, um, well absolutely sure so um again kind of like the coach's question i've been super fortunate to play alongside so many great players over the past 15 years that i've played baseball um there are countless guys i could name uh, there are, though, uh, a few um, that I consistently work with when I'm home that I've worked with from early high school, even before high school uh, till now. So uh, when I get home, Jake Frasca, Justin Jordan, um, again, my dad, those are guys um, that I've known for a really long time, home in Derry and Connecticut, that work extremely hard. We push each other. We're out there on the field every single day um, trying to get better. And I think the second part of that question, as I mentioned, I, I could go on and on all day about all the, all the amazing players that I've played with and learned from. But I think it's super important in baseball to be self-motivated. Again, like I said before, it's a really, really difficult sport. And if you don't have self-motivation, um, you're not going to get anywhere. It, it's, uh, sometimes it can knock you down, but without, without that self-motivation, without that desire, that internal desire, that fuels, um, fuels, fuels yourself, uh, it'll be really hard to succeed. So um, for a long time, I've known that this is what I want to do, and hopefully I can make a career out of it. And um, so my self-motivation drives me to work really hard and, and become better and better every day. Lovely. Um, how would you keep yourself motivated and, and on that high? Is it, is it a set a series of goals or types? Because um, – Personally, for me, I've throughout this whole lockdown thing that's, that's going on, I'm, I don't think I'm the only one that's that's been struggling or or trying to try to pull all the positives out of out of difficult and and trying situations. And there have been times when I've, I've questioned um, doing a show and just things being hard and difficult and just not being the right frame of mind. So, how is it you keep yourself focused? Sure, I think that's a great question. And as I mentioned before, I'm 
So we were talking off air. I'm in a summer collegiate league now, and um, I've been playing pretty well, but I had a stretch of about one or two games where I wasn't playing very well. Um, and during those times, you question, is this what it, should I be playing? Is this what I'm, I'm meant to be doing? Um, but in baseball, you can't get too high and you can't get too low. So I try to stay pretty even keeled. Uh, and as you mentioned, I think goals have been extremely important to me. I set goals for myself um, on a daily basis, whether those goals be short term or, or more long term. Um, so as you mentioned, goals are extremely important. I think in anything you do, but from a baseball sense, um, sometimes you can't get immediate feedback. Um, you know, if you want to go play in a college or you want to play professionally, that that's a long-term goal. And that's something that you can chip away at every day, though you may not be able to see it uh, in the present. So goals are something that, um, again, motivate, motivate, have motivated me to be a much better baseball player. Lovely. So let's uh, touch on some of your career highlights. How did you first um, get called up to the Great Britain national team? So it's a funny story, actually. So um, as I mentioned before, my family and I lived in London for four years. Or my, my parents were there for 10. I was there for four. My little sister was there for two. So we were both born uh, in London. But we moved back to the States. And as I mentioned before, I come from a baseball family, baseball uh, background. So my dad had always kind of had the idea. Uh, I wonder if there's baseball in Britain. I wonder if there's an Olympic team. I wonder if there's a national team. And we really had no idea if anything existed. So in, I want to say in about 2012, we started doing some research. Didn't really find anything. Um, we did research again probably in 2013, just on a whim. And we came across the national team and we emailed Will Lintern um, as his email was one of the only emails we could find online. And we just kind of inquired about the program and um, what it was all about and where they play and what age groups they offer. So after kind of that informational uh, email exchange between my dad and Will at the time. I was I was only 14 or 15. I, I, I think they were doing most of the emailing. Um, Will had asked for some video. So my dad and I went to one of the local batting cages that I that I've trained at um, for about, oh gosh, about 12 years now. Um, but we went, we went there, we took video of me throwing off the mound. We took video of me uh, hitting batting practice off my dad, uh, of me fielding ground balls, and we sent it over to Will. And, you know, shortly after that, he invited me to go play with the U18 team um, in Croatia in 2014. So it all kind of happened super fast, and it, it almost seemed surreal. Um, you know, we'd never met Will, um, and we kind of just found his email online. So it was a very surreal, uh, feeling and we, we had a ton of questions going into it, but, but, um, as I'm sure we'll get into, it's been, it's been one of the, one of the many blessings, um, in my life. What has been your favorite moments with the GB team? Ooh, favorite moments with the GB team. Um, you know, we've had so many, we've had so many great games. Um, we've had so many special experiences at each, <clears throat> at each age group. So I've played with the U18 team, the U23 team, uh, and the senior national team. But I think the thing that I'll always remember about Great Britain baseball, and I've been super fortunate. I've played in I'm almost 10 countries with the team. I've played for the past six years. This is the first year I'm not going um, overseas to play with Great Britain um, because of COVID and everything that's going on. Uh, but I think I'll remember most the relationships that I've formed. Um, I've, I've, I've been so fortunate to have had so many amazing coaches, training staff um, in the Great Britain, Great Britain baseball program that I remain in contact with today on a consistent basis. Um, there are players uh, that have become my very best friends. Um, Rory Chandler, I've played with for uh, 
uh, four years on the national baseball team. He's, he's my best friend in the entire world, and we're going to be uh, each other's best men in our weddings one day. Um, you know, Juan Diaz, Miguel Rodriguez. I mean, the list goes, the, the list goes on and on and on and on. I mean, I could name 50 guys right now. Um, but th that aspect is, has been so fulfilling and um, so unexpected. Um, Callum Vinyl, Conrad Cornell. I mean, I, I seriously could keep going all day. Um, but those connections are amazing. And one thing that I, that I always go draw back on and, and think about is when I first came over, to Great Britain in 2014 to practice with the team before we went to Croatia. We practiced at Farnham Park. And I've, I've played for many teams before, um, different travel organizations, different little league teams, and always that first day of practice when you meet your new, when you meet your new teammates is exciting, but it's also kind of nerve wracking. Um, and I had zero idea I, I knew nobody in, in Great Britain baseball when I first came over. So it, I was extremely nervous that first day of practice. And I went into the dugout at Farnham Park and every single player came over to me and shook my hand and introduced themselves. And we were, we were 15, 16, 17 years old. Um, and that just shows so much about the program, so much about the character of the players. Um, and, you know, that was my first, very first uh, interaction with those guys and just showed me um, so much about them and so much about the organization. And, um, you know, ever since, ever since that first day of practice, I knew it was something special and, and I was right. So as you mentioned, I, I you know, I, I can remember a ton of games and uh, great wins and, and tough losses I've formed. That's lovely. I was going to ask you how hard was it for you to settle in, but it sounds like that the, uh, they were really welcoming and made you feel part of the team straight away. What were your first impressions then when you first got there, not knowing anybody? I was, I was nervous, um, you know, but I was, I was nervous coming over. We really didn't know what to expect. Um, I, was, I was excited to play baseball for Great Britain, but I really didn't know what it meant at the time. Uh, my first manager was Will Lintern. Uh, I had, I don't think I met Liam Carroll that first year. I may have at Farnham Park one day. He's, he's been my manager pretty much um, uh, from 2016. So obviously know him really well, but really met Will Lintern and the rest of the guys on that first day. So, um, you know, I was very, I was extremely nervous, but like I said, they made me feel, feel right at home from the very first second I stepped into, into the dugout, which was extremely special. Um, that doesn't happen at a lot of places. It really doesn't. Um, you know, I've played on competitions, um, showcases where everybody's competing for, for a spot to go play in college, a summer ball. It, it's competitive. And, and I was, I was so taken back by the welcoming I got from my teammates. And um, so that, that definitely eased kind of, ease my anxiety and, and my nerves that first day. Um, so it kind of helped me relax and, and stay loose and, and play my game. Awesome. Lovely. What a great tale. Um, you got any favorite overseas destinations that you played baseball in when you've been the national team? Wow. So um, I've, I, I made a list of all the places I've played. Um, just because I played in so many, but um, that first year in Croatia um, was extremely special in Varazdin. It was a little town. I'll never forget the town. My, my, I've been really fortunate. My parents, my grandparents have, and my sister have been to most of the Great Britain tournaments I've played in. Uh, my parents and my parents have been to every single one. I think my sister's only missed one year and my grandparents have only missed one year. So, um, you know, we always talk about that first year in Croatia. For, for a lot of different reasons, but that town of Varazdin was extremely special. Um, and that was definitely one of my favorite places to play. We played, I played for the senior national team in last, last September uh, in Germany, and that was a special place as well. Um, I've played in Spain and Czech Republic and Austria and Slovakia and Poland. Um, all of those places have their special uh, quirks and, and places in my heart. 
Um, but that first year was, was, was very special to me. Sounds great. So have you got like a, a baseball in general that you keep of all the different destinations and, and things that you've done? Sure. Yeah. I, I, I do have a, I do have a baseball journal. It's not really about, um, you know, logging where I've been. It's more about, um, my mindset. Uh, I, you know, I usually, I usually write in that journal after uh, every game I play sometimes after practice. Um, but I, I write in that journal about, uh, my hitting performance, my fielding performance, my throwing performance, how I felt, what I was telling myself in the box just so I can kind of refer back to those when I'm struggling, when I'm doing well, so I can remember all the things that I've thought to my, um, but in terms of remembering the places and things I've done, um, no, I usually look at pictures. <laughs> yeah. I took a lot of pictures over the years of all the places I've been. So, uh, lucky, lucky to have those memories, um, you know, on our, on our devices. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. Uh, any other career highlights you want to, to touch on away from the GB setup? You, you mentioned before that you played in the, well, you not only played in it, you're a champion in the Cape Cod League. Uh, is it the, with the Ketleers? Did I say it right? The, yes. Ketua Ketleers. So, Thank you. So as you mentioned, um, and I think I said it before, but in, in 2016, my high school did something that we hadn't done in 35 years. Um, we won an extra innings in our league championship game. Uh, I pitched eight innings. Um, and we won uh, on a walk-off. So that was, that was one of the most exciting nights of my life. Um, we won the championship in Cape Cod uh, in 2019 last summer. We lost the very first game of the playoffs. And it was, uh, it was the quarterfinals, semifinals, and final series were all best two out of three. So you would play – so we lost the very first game. So we were facing elimination – that second game we played in the quarterfinals. Um, so after that first loss, we rattled off six wins in a row to win the championship. We didn't, we didn't drop another, we didn't drop another game. Um, and that first game in the championship series, I had not pitched um, at all in the playoffs. So, you know, I was frustrated. I wanted to play and I got my opportunity in the ninth inning uh, of the first game of the championship away um, at Wareham. And I came in, um, the game was tied. And our, so our pitcher that went out to start the ninth inning walked a guy, then hit a guy in the face. <laughs> so there was first and second with no outs. And I was called into the game. And I had pretty much no warm up pitches. Uh, you know, I had no warning that I was going to go in. He walked someone and then hit somebody. And coach called down and, and said I was in the game. So I went out to the, to the mound and you know fired off warm-up pitches until that kid who got hit in the face was good to go uh and i ended up pitching six scoreless innings to keep us in the game we went ahead in the top of the 15th inning uh we won that night our closer came in and shut the door and uh you know that was an extremely special moment for me and for my teammates so we won the first game of the championship series on the road and then the next night we played at home in Katuit. And we won 10-3. Um, you know, we, they had used kind of all their pitching, and we had guys lined up out the wazoo. So we were set up for that second game. Uh, but, but that series, that playoff run was, was extremely special. And, um, you know, I was surrounded by a great coaching staff, as I've been fortunate to have been surrounded by in my career at, in, in many different organizations, and um, a bunch of great teammates and even better even better guys. So um, those, those two nights, those two championship wins uh, really stand out in my mind. That's great. Now, when I was doing a bit of research on you, I noticed that depending on which uh, page I was looking at, you're down there as, as a pitcher or as an out, uh, outfielder, infielder. So what, how would you best describe yourself as a player? Do, do you class yourself as a, as a pitcher or do you say you, you're more infield, outfield? Or do you like to be a master of all of them? So, <laughs> absolutely. So my whole life, I've been a, been considered a, a two way, I guess. Um, so I've I've pitched, I've played infield, I've played outfield. I, in high school, I was a pitcher and a shortstop. I was recruited to Emory University as an infielder. Um, we got to, 
I got to campus in the fall of 2016 and we had a pitching coach. This is a funny story. I had a pitching coach named Matthew Troop and coach Troop was new to the team and I was a freshman. So I was new as well. And at one of the first meetings, he um, said to me, or he said to the team, he addressed the team and said, look guys, I'm new. If anyone wants to come by my office and say, hello, please do so. Uh, I'd love to meet you guys. So he didn't mean just pitchers. He, he meant anybody. So I, I decided to do it and dropped in his office one day and we started talking and he said to me, Oh, uh, you know, you're an athletic guy. You've, you've kind of played in the infield at different spots. Have you ever pitched before? And I said, well, it's funny you, you say that. Uh, I've been pitching my whole life. And he said, would you ever consider pitching college? And I said, sure. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't planning on it, but um, I'd be happy to give it a try. And so he said, okay, you're throwing a bullpen on Tuesday. And that was it. And ever since then, I've pitched in college. Um, so Matthew Troop was the pitching coach for Great Britain last year um, in Germany. So Coach Troop um, has, was only at Emory for one year, but Coach Troop is one of my um, very close friends and mentors and, and one of my favorite coaches ever. And he kind of knew that I was – that I, that I was involved in Great Britain baseball. And uh, he had been asking me for some time to tell him if there was a job opening, to tell, them, to tell him if I, if, if I thought uh, the team was looking for a pitching coach or an assistant coach because he really would like to travel the world and, um, you know, coach for, an, for a national team. He, that's something he's never done. So I reached out to Liam Carroll before the Germany tournament uh, in two, early 2019, probably in the summer of 2019. And I said, I had a guy for him and he took coach Troop. So coach Troop who coached me at Emory university, um, also was over in great Britain with me and, uh, and coached the team as well. So, um, that was that was really special. But I guess uh, a long way of saying I've played all over the field. Um, I um, infield my first year was a reliever. And then my second, third and fourth years, I was a pitcher and a center fielder. Um, so I'm, I'm comfortable all over the diamond. I still don't know what I am. Um, <laughs> I'm going to keep doing both until someone tells me to stop, I guess is the best way to put it. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, one thing I meant to ask you as well before about when we're talking about you, you college and university. How how was it that you um, – did, did you pick Duke or did, did the universities come to you with, with offers? How, how does it work over there with the universities and the college systems? Sure. So my senior year, this past uh, spring, I was kind of like a, like a junior or a senior in high school again, kind of going through the recruiting process. Um, so I had um, – I actually had a little bit of an arm injury early in the season this spring. So um, I was thinking about taking a redshirt year before COVID shut down uh, the, the NCAA baseball season. So I started reaching out to schools, building a, building a list of schools and emailing different coaches. Um, and with the help of, with the help of coach Mike Roberts um, from the Ketua Ketelers, um, you know, I was able to, set up some calls with different coaches around the country. Coach Roberts really was instrumental in helping me connect with some high profile coaches that I, that I spoke with and was fortunate to, to speak with. So, um, you know, Duke was on my list from, from, you know, about the time that I thought I was going to play another year. Um, and coach Roberts helped um, get that started. I spoke to coach, the head coach, Coach Pollard at Duke um, a number of times. And, you know, on about our second or third call, I knew that it was the spot for me. And I told him that, you know, I was all in and not talking to any other schools anymore. And uh, um, I was excited to be a Blue Devil. That's great. Are the setups generally the, the same with, with, with the high school and the colleges and the universities? Are, are there any like, differences that you can tell us about with the setups? Sure. In terms of kind of the facilities. Hmm. Sure. Yeah. So, um, sure. So in, in, in high school, uh, we, we had our own field. Um, usually each high school has their own baseball field, 
but may not have the rest of the facilities. Schools may not have batting cages or weight rooms or training rooms or cafeterias. Uh, mine certainly didn't. Uh, mine was a, I went to a public high school and um, there were some high schools with probably private high schools with those amenities, but not many, not many. Um, so at Emory University, we had access to more. Um, we had our own field, we had batting cages. Uh, we had a training room. There was a varsity weight room that we used as a team. Um, and the same goes for Duke. Duke has, Duke has their own field, their own uh, weight room, their own, uh, their own athletes weight room, their own cafeteria. So um, in college, you, you kind of have access to more resources than you may in high school. And I think that's uh, pretty general across the board. Okay. Um, only a few more questions for me before I open up to the to listener questions. Uh, I can see from your face when you talk about baseball that you're really passionate and, and it means a lot to you. But what do you love the most about baseball? I love competing. Um, I love competing. I love, you know, uniting under a common goal. Baseball is a team game. It cannot be won individually. Um, you know, there may be great individual performances, but you cannot win the game by yourself. Um, so, you know, I love the competition aspect. I love the challenge. Baseball is extremely hard and, and, um, and I think it's the hardest game in the world, but I think it's the best game in the world world. Um, it's super rewarding. And, um, you know, I've, I've been, I've been working at it for a really long time and, um, I've continued to work on my game and, see progress as I've gone. And that's super inspiring to me as well, because, um, you know, when you see progress, you, 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 um, you hope for more and you can work toward more. So I think those, those things are, um, what keep me motivated and, uh, and, and still do today. Cracking. So what sort of legacy would you like to leave once you've hung up your cleats? Sure. So I, I, I'd like to be known as a guy who um, made others better. I think that's a super important quality in, in any player. I think it's a super important quality in a leader. Um, you know, I'd like to be, I'd like to be uh, known as a, as a guy who left it all on the, uh, out on the field, as a guy who was never outworked or out hustled. There are a lot of things you cannot control in a baseball game, but um, hustle and effort are two things that you can control. And I make sure I try to control those and, um, and, and do them to my, the best of my ability. So um, I, I want to be known as a winner. I want to be known as a leader. I want to be known as a guy who never took a pitch off, but also um, made others better around him and um, was a great listener and a great learner. That's inspiring. Thank you very much. Uh, and now to listen to questions, one that he's asked is, do you remember what you had for breakfast before your first ever Great Britain practice? <laughs> well, I think I know who this is from. This is from Will Lintern. Um, so the story behind this question is, as I mentioned before, in 2014, we really, my, my family and I really didn't know much about Great Britain baseball. So before the first practice at Farnham Park, um, Will Lintern re uh, reached out to my dad uh, and me and asked if we could have breakfast or if we should have breakfast before the first practice. And so we did. We went to a Weatherspoons by Farnham Park and we sat down and I had an English breakfast. Um, and I like eggs and bacon, but I wasn't, I don't think I ate a ton off of that plate and I'm a pretty good eater. I think that was the first time I had an English breakfast, um, even though I'm a dual citizen and lived in London. So that's unacceptable. But uh, it was with my dad. It was with Will Lintern. And we ate at a Weatherspoons near Farnham Park. You can't be a good Weatherspoons frail. <laughs> that is a, a fact. Um, can you describe your first ever home run for the Great Britain national team? And that also comes in from Will. Sure. So, so my first home run for the national team was in 2014 as well. Uh, it was in Croatia. We were playing in the quarterfinal game against Switzerland and we were up six to three at one point in the game and we let up a three run home run and the game was now six to six and the, the innings were, we were getting into the later innings, second half of the game. And 
I, uh, I told George Blaskett, who gave up the home run, I told him I had his back before I went up <laughs> for my third or fourth at bat of the game. And I went up with two guys on base, and the game was tied. I believe it was the seventh inning. And Will was coaching third, and he called a hit and run. And I tried to hit a ground ball to second base, and I swung, and I looked up, and the ball was headed over the left field fence. So that, that swing put us up 9-6, to six, and we went on to win the game 15-6 to six in the quarterfinals. So um, that was – I think that that was my first home run ever. I don't think I ever hit one before then. I didn't hit any in Little League. I hit a couple, um, you know, I hit some in high school, hit some in college and in summer leagues here in between. But uh, that was my first home run on the big field and um, in my first Great Britain um, tour. So uh, that was a super special moment. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll remember running around the bases and hearing um, my teammates and, and, and fans and our fans uh, cheer for me and cheer for us and and will greet me around third i'll remember that forever that's brilliant great stuff and uh, the final one from will um and this is a great question and one that i probably hopefully would have liked to thought i would have asked myself uh, what tips and recommendations do you have for any young aspiring british baseball players who want to achieve lofty goals in particular the discipline required and daily habits yeah, it's a super great, it's a great question and, and super important as well. Um, a couple of things that I can, that I can think of. First, anything is possible. Um, there have been a number of guys from Great Britain baseball who have gone on and done amazing things in the game. So um, that should be inspiring itself. Um, you know, I think it's always, it's always inspiring and helps you work even harder when you have uh, like-minded teammates and like-minded friends. So I'd say surround yourself with the right people, surround yourself with the right people. And the other thing is in, um, you know, an age of technology and social media, there are so many great resources out there um, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Google search, you know, that can help elevate your game. Um, and uh, you know, when the time comes, in terms of, you know, wanting to go on to maybe college or, or college baseball in the States, there are so many great um, resources and promoters that will, you know, retweet your video for free. You know, you can email any college coach in the country videos of you throwing or hitting. Um, so in an age of technology, I think, you know, I think we're going to see more and more Great Britain baseball players transition from, um, or, or move into college baseball in the States. I think it's in, in extremely possible. And, you know, as the program grows and as social media develops and, um, you know, is, is, is even more uh, a part of their lives than it was uh, for me at, at their age, you know, I think, I think we're going to see even more players um, continue on in baseball. And that's great. So again, I, I you know, I would say keep at it. Um, like I said, self-motivation is key and, you know, love the game, love the game, um, watch the game. Um, but it's also important to do other things when you're younger. Uh, I don't think that specializing is um, the way to always do it. You know, I, I played other sports up until high school. Uh, I played basketball and American football and, and, and baseball. You know, it wasn't until high school until I started to specialize, but um, even then that was a, maybe a little bit young. Like I look back and think about, oh, I wish I, you know, I wish I played basketball in high school, but, uh, you know, I think it's important to be an athlete. It's important to go out and have fun to compete. Uh, because at the end of the day, baseball is about competing. So, um, you know, other sports are great as well. So, uh, yeah. That's great. I think you should mention that as well about, about dipping your, your toes into to other pools of, of sports. There's a, a few occasions that I've I've heard from the baseball club where, where I'm out in Manchester where kids have dropped away from baseball because their parents want them to focus more on football or, or soccer, I should say. And <laughs> um, and it, it baffles me because it, it doesn't seem like a sport that can conflict unless it's like training times or schedules. And it, I find it a bit uh, saddening that, that kids are being maybe deprived of baseball opportunities in Britain because other sports can take over when they could go hand in hand. 
and especially because of the benefits of the sports anyway, being outdoors and, and all that sort of stuff, like you said, then being around good people. Um, did, did you find that there was ever a time where you weren't surrounded by the right sort of friends? Did you ever have friends outside of baseball that wanted to do other things that weren't baseball related that uh, tried to distract you? Absolutely. I think that's a part of growing up. Um, you know, I think the best example is in, is my high school days. So in, in high school, I was very motivated and knew from the beginning that I wanted to go play in college. So, um, you know, there were a lot of temptations. I had friends who went off and did different things, spent their time different ways, but I was always the kid who didn't need to be reminded of his goals. Um, and I, wasn't afraid to say no to people. So, you know, when, when people were out late hanging out and doing whatever they were doing, I was in the gym or I was in batting cages with my dad and with a couple of my buddies. Um, you know, I, fortunately I was raised by incredible parents who set an incredible example for me at an early age. Um, so I, I, I didn't have to be told a lot, you know, you know, not to do this, not to do that. If you, you know, if you really want this, then you got to work harder. That wasn't me. Um, but, you know, I think there are temptations all the time. Um, there are temptations now, uh, you know, in college, certainly, as well as high school. Um, people do different things. Teammates spend time, spend their time different ways. But, um, you know, I've, again, I've always had self-motivation and I've always, you know, been clear to myself, been clear to my family, been clear to my friends. And, you know, other people know <laughs> that, uh, you know, nothing's going to get in, in the way of me and my baseball goals. So, um, you know, I've always had my head on straight. There are temptations always. So you need to, you need to prioritize, um, you know, what's really important. You got to ask yourself what's important. And one question I always try to ask myself is, you know, is what I'm doing right now helping me in a positive way uh, toward my goals? Help me. Is it helping me reach my goals? Right. So, is the way I'm spending my time valuable? Now, of course, everyone needs a break and, and you should take time to do other things. But, you know, time builds up over time. So the way that you spend your time, um, you know, usually becomes a habit. So, uh, you know, I've been, I've been, I've had priorities and I've had a routine um, and I've had goals. So, um, you know, I've been able to say no to those temptations, but they certainly do exist. Yeah, it's only got a very wise head on young shoulders. It's quite, um, I, I wish that I'd been more like that when I was younger. I'm not saying that I had a misspent youth. I was, I, I just went, join you look back at things. You, you, you wish you'd done things a little bit differently. I find myself now with the opportunities that I've got, especially with like, I've, I've already started playing baseball. I've never, never even played a, a game. I'm still in training. Um, but just wishing that I'd got involved in it at a younger age and, I think I think it's quite an, an inspiring chat with, with you today, and I hope that if any of the, the youth players are listening um, to the show, that they'll find a lot of your advice really helpful and knowledgeable, and, and just having those goals and being driven and motivated. I can't. Remember, it's um, it's been a really interesting chat, and I must thank you for your time. It's been been really really good, and uh, I appreciate you you um, coming on the show um just before we part ways i always leave the last word open to the guest uh, so is there anything you'd like to touch on or uh, any shout outs any parting advice sure so you know going on going off your last point um i think in order to grow the game i think constant communication is 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 great um, you see that in the major leagues now you know i think there's going to be a season starting soon um you know they're talking about spring training july or spring training 2.0 july 1st trying to go back to games late july but the the camaraderie uh, that we've seen from the players over the past couple of years on on social media um, and interacting with young fans is such an important way to grow the game so um you know anything i can do to help in the great britain baseball world uh, you know, I'm happy to speak with with young players. Um, don't don't hesitate to reach out. I'm I'm out there. I'm on social media. So, um, you know, I love this game so much, and anything I can do uh, to help it, especially in the country that I was born and the national team I play for, um, I'd love to do so. So, um, Matthew, thank you again for having me on. This has been a real pleasure. It was something I was looking forward to doing for a while. So, 
thank you very yeah. much me too thank you again for being such a great guest and, and thanks for your advice and where can we find you on on twitter and social medias sure so i think my twitter is r brereton three um r the letter r then b r e r e t o n the number three and my instagram is is r brereton um but the second e in brereton's the number three um i'm richard brereton the third so i had to throw that in there but uh Nicely done. That's where you can find me. Great stuff. I'll make sure I put all the links in the show notes as well. And uh, that's it. Thank you again, Richard. I wish you all the best of luck. Please stay in touch with us and let us know you get on at Duke and beyond. And I'll see you soon. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Take care. Ta-ra.